what's happening on the debt ceiling. There's a big fight here. And remember, uh, Donald Trump has announced to his minions, do not cut Social Security and Medicare. It's hard to know what the negotiations are. But it certainly feels like there is a uh, that that McCarthy, of course, has boxed himself in. He is not the um, most adept at these things. Let's put it that way. And I think we're starting to. Uh, I think I think over the coming months we're going to see, um, you know, his his failure of of uh, of, of leadership become more pronounced but we'll see because it's also um there's also you know democrats and they often have a failure of leadership uh, too in these situations or uh and that's i'm sure we're going to take full advantage of this exactly <laughs> you're right i got hopeful for one second and that was a mistake but let's listen to uh elise stefanik republican from new york on uh maria bataramo's uh program the problem they have is that they want to cut the budget, but there's really two big chunks of the American budget. One chunk is Social Security and Medicare. And of course, this is self-funding. I should tell you that the Social Security uh, is in no way statutorily contributes to the deficit. But they still want to cut it so they can seep some of that money out of the Social Security Trust Fund and out of those taxes and not have to raise any taxes to, you know, keep it solvent for the next 75 years, let's say. And of course, you know, uh, uh, Social Security taxes are hitting a historically low amount of, of, of income in this country. And uh, the other place is the defense budget. And of course, so they got to pretend like they may cut the defense budget, but they have no real interest in doing that whatsoever. So they're only going to cut, yes, you guessed it, the woke parts. Do you have areas in your mind that you think are ripe for spending cuts? Where would you cut? Well, absolutely. We need to look at every dollar when it comes to discretionary spending. We see the waste, fraud, and abuse that exists in these agencies. I see it every day in my oversight capacity, whether it's on, you know, many of these agencies that we oversee. Take a look at the Department of Defense. Now, I've been a strong advocate when it comes to making sure that we have the resources for strong national security. But their woke agenda, we ought to be going after those programs that are not focused on what DOD should be focused on, but are far left radical agendas. Also, also look at the unspent COVID funds. That's hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars that we can go after immediately. But let's, I mean, we should really drill down what uh, areas of the military budget are woke. To be honest, I feel like we should turn over every stone and look into every nook and cranny because the wokeness seems to be spreading like wildfire within the military. And just to be safe, I think we should just cut it in half and begin from there the f-35 that's a woke project pretty sure we should nix that take it apart uh, one by one I, the the wokeness is just i would love love one time for uh one of these uh hosts to say like okay give us like three woke programs and yeah. how much are you going to be saving on those woke programs let's do some like the nature accounting. Of, <laughs> like like the nature of the advertising Right. Like, it's not even like we're not going to cut back on the advertising budget. We're just going to cut back on the part that, like, has a rainbow flag. Right. The one that says we want we this is a safe space for anyone with your gender identity Which is, if you want to commit. To uh, be clear, <laughs> like, they're not doing that because they want to, like, spread uh, LGBTQ sentiment or through the world because that's a Department of Defense <laughs> priority. They're doing it because they're trying to recruit gay people because it's better to have all types of people than just, like, sort of, like, right-wing fundamentalist Christians in your uh, global military. It makes it more well, durable, not to, right? We're not just trying to recruit gay people. They're trying to project to all right, exactly, uh, yeah. potential, um, you know, people who need money and, uh, you know, uh, can't afford college, let's say, uh, or want some structure in their lives or whatever it is reason that they go in that they're trying to project that like we're not the we're not the notion of the military that you have in the past. We're not right. like, you know, 
We accept all people. We are open. We're non-discriminatory. That's all they're trying to say. It's woke washing. It's what like in it, it, it's a way to essentially obscure what the military military industrial complex what we actually do by pretending that it's like this equal opportunity uh area. It's, it's all companies no, that I, tell their new recruits like actually like Exxon here at Exxon we actually do care about the environment right. and we're doing all these sorts of things that you can be a part of too. I don't even think it's I I actually don't think it's I don't think it's quite that. I think it's more like I mean they're not the the wokeness does not the the wokeness does not sort of hide what the military does. What the wokeness just says as an experience. It's not going to be you know the, this is not the great Santini anymore or this is not like there it's is both, not bigotry. Sam. Well, it, it may be both, but I think like it, it, like honestly like it's really in the same way just they want to say, like, this is going to be a comfortable culture because they know that your average 18 year old now does not want to be surrounded by a bunch of bigots. Right. And yeah, but the average 18 year old also grew up in an Iraq war era and or in the wake of that and has an understanding of United States empire that is anti woke. And so when you bridge that, that's how. You, and also it just it makes it more durable to continue empire if you have a, a wider swath of people in it because it's you're able to I, I to distribute it more evenly and make it seem less like an old boys club which seems antiquated you're updating I, the software yeah i i mean i i agree maybe we're splitting the hairs here but i just also think that like you're you're targeting uh very often you know sort of, um you're targeting black people in this country uh you're targeting it and you you want a wide array of people but you want them to not think that the 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 military is bigoted the 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 imperialism that's a different story but um it is it is i think like the the idea it, it, it's just simply branding like like a corporate culture and it's a, co a corporate culture that you know, is open to everybody yeah. and, and and it is completely a recruiting uh, tool and nothing more. And not and a project, probably like a social an conditioning project. Right. It's probably an effective recruiting tool. I mean, so that's it. Yeah. The no, best way to deal with the wokeness. Yeah. Cut. cut down the military. Right. No, it's it's not. It's not. We have to maintain. It's not just a PR thing. It is all throughout the military, Sam. Right. That's why we have to cut. Wink. You know, got it. No, I get what you're saying. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not being There's yourself. no it, it, exactly, <laughs> but I do think that if they were to like maybe promote the military as being anti woke, they'll get less recruits. Exactly. They 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 have it. They have it. They've been effing up recruiting so badly on both ends because, like, one they're trying to like get the Pentagon to stop doing this like basic like recruiting a like a gen z person which is like not a bigot and also they're saying uh, to the people who like they want to see in the military which is like rabid sort of evangelical christians right they're saying like actually it's going to turn like brainwash you into a crt person right exactly so those people also aren't signing up so they're really like undermine the military and i just say like keep it up boys um here is kevin mccarthy trying to make the same i mean they're always talking about um you know waste and fraud as the way of 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 cutting which is um fantastic because it means nothing i mean you want to talk about waste and fraud in the private sector it is uh completely commensurate and we certainly could get rid of waste and fraud you know what you should do uh you know where there's a huge amount of fraud that's taking place taxes mm. we have a lot of people not paying their taxes and they should be applauding because we know every dollar spent with the IRS increases revenue to uh, the government by, I don't know, $6. That's a great return on investment. That's very businessy thinking. And if you want to get rid of waste and fraud, the best thing to do is more cops on the beat in terms of environmental uh, fraud, in terms of uh, Medicare fraud, in terms of uh, uh, tax fraud, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I just use cops in the vernacular, regulators, so that uh, uh, the uh, right wingers listen. The Gestapo listen, imagery it. doesn't exactly. get <laughs> here <laughs> is uh, here is uh, Kevin McCarthy on with uh, Margaret Brennan. Is defense spending on the table? 
Well, look, I, I want to make sure we're protected in our defense spending, but I want to make sure it's effective and efficient. I want to look at every single dollar we're spending, no matter where it's being spent. I want to eliminate waste wherever it is. But when you uh, became speaker, you did come to that agreement I've referenced of, of capping 24, spending at 22 levels. Well, look, so listen. that would call for reductions. No, I mean, look, you're going to tell me inside defense there's no waste others. Um, I mean, so defense I, spending they is spend a lot of I think everything when you look at discretionary is sitting there. It's like every single household It's like every single state. We shouldn't just print more money. We should balance our budget. So I want to look at every single department. Where can we become more efficient, more effective and more accountable? So more that efficiencies in Social Security and Medicare as well. The one thing I want to take, we take Social Security Completely. and America okay. off the table. Did you Ooh. know that the Department of the good. Defense has uh, failed its fifth consecutive audit and is the only uh, and the U.S. military is the only U.S. government agency to never pass a comprehensive audit? <laughs> yes. Um, interesting, though, at the end there, we said uh, no Social Security is uh, and Medicare off the table. And yeah, but they said, say that. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, it, it seems like that's what the, he's saying. And he did say discretionary spending. Uh, which is specifically not uh, Medicare and Social Security. And so now they're having to pretend like they're going to cut the, uh, the, the defense budget. I, I'm all in favor of it. I, they, should cut, they should cut whatever they can cut from that defense budget, they should do, without a doubt. There is waste and fraud, but there's also just, like, the whole thing is fraud. Yeah. But that's, what they're, that's their gear up, I think, to at least leave the door open to cut Medicare or Social Security. They're going to try to claim that there's a, a, a too much Medicare and Social yeah. Security fraud. Even Manchin was hinting at that with his, you know, commission. Yeah, we, we, we wanted to save it, but we just found this stuff that we couldn't, you know, this low-hanging fruit that we had to you know, protect the American taxpayer from. But I'm curious if trump backed them into that corner i am curious definitely if, yeah definitely like we have been talking about it but i feel like mccarthy's been way more definitive on that as soon as trump made that video being like it would be the worst thing for you guys to do to touch it but then it backs them also into the we need to cut the wokeness out of the military which, definitely which also doesn't uh, sit well with a lot of other republicans that aren't like you know paul gosar and matt gates so it's a it's a tough line mccarthy's gonna be walked walking when yeah. push comes to shove actually actually in these negotiations i mean let's be clear the defense budget is i would i my guess is just objectively speaking even aside from what i want the military to not or to do or to not do 50 percent of it at least is a fraud yeah i mean 50 percent of it is at least a fraud like yes. you know just like even the like these massive um you know uh development of 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 airplanes and uh, fighter jets and uh i mean 50 percent of it is a fraud we the don't need gap? these things yeah the f-35 program has gone over its original budget by 165 billion dollars to date like they they just spend they uh, talk about fiscal responsibility just i mean they don't care about this but even no. conceding their framing i mean the, the military go gets an absurd amount of money more than they ask for and they still lose billions and billions of dollars goes completely unaccounted for and then also goes over budget on its items because they know right. that they know that they'll always write the check the federal government will always back them up like i say regardless of what your your position is as to you know wh what the military should be doing 50 percent of it's fraud it's i mean it's just a joke there's no we don't need it to even do what uh we we supposedly are arguing about i saw some story over the weekend that there's concern that our uh funding of and providing weapons to ukraine is diminishing our supplies for a possible war with china and it's just <laughs> it is um it's just a fraud it's just a fraud